The Jacket by Andrew Clements, Part 2. Friends with Everybody. The rest of Phil's Thursday wasn't so good. Compared with the thoughts swirling through his mind, decimals and adjectives and ancient Egypt didn't seem very important. Phil knew that all he had done was tell the truth about the lunch money, about the jacket, about Daniel's grandmother. It was all true, but he couldn't shake the feeling that he'd done something bad. Page 18. He kept thinking about the early morning scene in the principal's office, replaying it again and again. He kept seeing the look on Daniel's face, the anger in his eyes as he threw the jacket to the floor. And instinctively, Phil knew that his being white and Daniel's being black was part of this, maybe a big part. Phil had known a lot of African-American kids at school ever since his first day as a kindergartner. And he thought, I don't care what color anybody is. I never pay attention to that. I'm friends with everybody. But being friends with everyone and being someone's friend, those were two different things. And as he thought about it, Phil knew he had never had a black kid for a friend. Not really. The kids on the school basketball team were good guys, but not really friends. Black kids went to his school, but did they live in his neighborhood? Not in his part of the city. That's just how things were. Every morning, Daniel and the other African-American kids arrived at school by bus, or sometimes their parents dropped them off. A lot of Hispanic kids, too. A lot of Hispanic kids, too. Phil didn't know exactly where they came from. It didn't really matter to him, and he never really thought about it much until today. Phil kept arguing with himself. He thought, yeah, but during school, everyone gets along fine. White kids, Hispanic kids, Asian kids, black kids, no problems. Most of the African-American kids sat together at lunch, and they tended to hang around together in the halls at recess. But that didn't seem weird to Phil. When you eat lunch, or if you have a little free time, you want to be with your friends, that's all. Besides, besides, page 20, besides everyone played sports together during gym, and sometimes at recess too. Everyone, together, no problems. And all the black guys on my basketball team, I get along great with them. Still, after school every day, almost all the black kids got onto buses or climbed into cars and drove away. Those kids just disappeared as Phil went to basketball practice or walked home with his friends. Sitting in math class, Phil thought about Daniel's grandmother. I've known her longer than Daniel has. And it was true. He was two years older than Daniel, and Phil had known Lucy all his life. Lucy. That's what he'd always called her, just Lucy. She came every other Saturday and helped his mom clean the house. Phil had never even wondered about her last name. It had never mattered. She was just Lucy. Until today. When he was little, Phil had loved helping on cleaning day. He would take hold of the bucket with all the supplies in it and heave it up from the front stairs one at a time. Lucy would smile and say, Why, Philip, look at you. You sure are big and strong. And now that he was almost 12, sometimes as he ran through the house to get a baseball glove or grab a bite of lunch before going out to shoot baskets with his friends, Lucy would look up from her work and narrow her eyes at him. She would put her hands on her hips and say, Isn't that just the way? Now you're big enough to really help your mama, and do you? No, because you've got too much going on to be bothered with that. Page 22. But that was just to tease him. But that was just to tease him, because it wasn't like Phil 
didn't do chores. He did plenty around the house. He took out the trash, raked the yard, mowed the grass, shoveled snow in the winter, stuff like that. And he didn't mind doing housework either. But Mom always said he and Jimmy didn't do it right. <laughs> she said, you guys pick up the big pieces, things like shoes and dirty clothes. Leave the little stuff for me and Lucy to worry about, which was fine with him. Phil kept trying to reason away his feelings. Can I help it if we have a cleaning lady, and she's black, and we're white? And can I help it if she's Daniel's grandmother? I mean, it's not like we're rich or something. It's not like we force Lucy to work for us, is it? Which was true, especially about not being rich. His mom and dad each, page 24, his mom and dad each had a full-time job. And back when Phil was born, his mother had decided to give herself a treat once every two weeks. That's what she called it, a treat. And that was having Lucy come to help her do the deep cleaning. Phil thought about his own grandmothers. He had two, one here in the city and one in Florida. His mother's mom was the one who lived close. Grandma Morcone, maybe Morcone, Grandma Morcone was sort of rich. She and Grandpa lived in a condominium on Herndon Street, not too far from the big museum. Her place was way up on the 14th floor. You could see the city parks from her windows, and the view looked like this beautiful painting. On the 4th of July, and sometimes on New Year's Eve, Phil and Jimmy and their big sister, Juliana, would sit with their grandparents on the balcony and watch the fireworks. Page 25. Grandma Morcone had long arms, thin and white, she wore silver bracelets on both wrists, and on one of her hands there was a ring with a big green stone in it. Phil could picture her fine clothes, her small diamond earrings, her silver blue hair, always neatly styled. His grandma didn't clean houses for other families. She probably never put a bandana over her hair and pulled on yellow rubber gloves, like Lucy did. At lunchtime, Phil edged into the cafeteria. He scanned the big room, looking for Daniel. He wasn't there, and Phil was glad. He got in line and started looking. I'm sorry. He got in line and started loading food onto his tray. Grilled cheese, red jello, carrot sticks, chocolate milk, and an ice cream sandwich. The lady at the end of the counter took his money, looked at his tray, and then shook her head. You need another quarter, honey, or else put the ice cream back. Phil dug deep into his pockets, but he didn't have another quarter, and he knew why. This morning, when he gave the principal Jimmy's lunch money, he had given away too much. Phil had picked up the ice cream from his tray when a voice behind him said, that's okay. Here's another quarter. Phil smiled and turned to say thanks, but he stopped before the word came out. It was Daniel. He was three kids back in the lunch line, and he was holding up a quarter, and he was smiling, but it wasn't a real smile. Phil could see that. It was a smile that said, gotcha. Phil shook his head and felt himself starting to blush. No, that's okay. I don't want the ice cream anyway. He's embarrassed. Page 28. You sure? Asked Daniel, his smile getting bigger. What's the matter? It's a gift. I'm just being kind. Phil put the ice cream sandwich back in the freezer. He took his tray and walked stiffly to a table where some of his friends were sitting. He took a seat facing the wall and he began to eat, tearing off big mouthfuls of soft grilled cheese, chewing without tasting. 
He didn't talk, and he didn't look around. When he was done, he dumped his trash, dropped off the tray, and went straight out the side door to the playground. The cold wind felt good on his burning cheeks. The thing was, Phil saw exactly what Daniel had been doing when he offered him that quarter. Daniel was trying to get back at him, to embarrass him with a gift. And it had worked. Walking beside the fence, kicking a stone ahead of him, Phil kept on thinking, but Mom, giving something to Lucy, that was different, right? Because it's not like Lucy was begging. And it isn't like Mom was trying to make herself feel all rich and grand or make Lucy feel small and poor. Because Mom was just trying to be nice, right? And there's nothing wrong with that. There can't be anything wrong with being kind, can there? A burst of laughter came from the other side of the playground, and Phil turned to look. Six black kids, all fourth and fifth graders, all boys. No one was looking his way, but Phil still had the feeling they had been laughing at him. But was it true, or was it just his imagination? A gust of wind made his eyes water, and he zipped his coat up under his chin. And still looking at the black kids, Phil recognized one of them. The one with his hands jammed into his pockets and his shoulders hunched up against the cold. He recognized the kid who wasn't wearing a jacket.